You know, as I think about the writing of the Apostle Paul here, it reminds me of God's people as we go out into the world to witness to other people. And you know, you take preachers, and some people call them Christians. Most people just call them church-going people. Many times they'll tell them, when we go to talk to them out into the world, they say, I wish you'd mind to your own business. Why? Because they do not want to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus told His mother in Luke 2 and 49, that he must be about his father's business. I want to tell you here this morning, as a child of God, what our business really is as a Christian. And you and I are just like the Apostle Paul we are the ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, an ambassador, you know, by watching television and things of the government, they've got ambassadors to go to other countries and around. But their job is everywhere they go, they represent the United States of America. You and I's job is to represent Jesus everywhere we go if it's on the other side of the world to tell them about Jesus. Jesus charged His disciples in the Bible in Mark 16, 15, and 16. He told them, He said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I believe he's trying to say to his people, don't call no one out. If you have an opportunity to tell them something about the Lord, tell them about it. And he said, He that believeth and is baptized, and that is the ones that receive the Spirit of God, shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. A child of God's duty is to tell people about Jesus. I don't care where we fit in the family of God. We are an ambassador for Christ. As we see in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. I want to tell you, anybody that had ever come to accept Jesus as their personal Savior, they have to hear the Word of God. Luke 14, 23, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go ye out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. <clears throat> Everywhere that we go, we need to invite somebody to get in church somewhere. I don't only just invite people to come to Cummins Mill Church, but I invite them to get into the house of God somewhere. And so if people are lost and undone without Jesus as their Savior, we have a heavy responsibility laid upon us to warn them. 
whether they like it or not. Because Ezekiel, listen what he said in Ezekiel 33 and verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquities, but his blood will I require at thy hand. If we do not warn people in the world, their blood, if they die lost, is required to you and I. He said also to the lost people, when you turn a child of God down out into the world, you don't only turn them down, but you turn Jesus down. Why? Because He dwells in our hearts. Matthew 25 and verse 35 through 44, listen what the Bible says about it. He said, For I was in hungry, you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he said, you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visit me. I was in prison, and you come into me. And then the righteous shall answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, and fed thee or thirsty, and gave thee drink, or when saw thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee. And the Bible said, or when saw thee, thee, thee sick and in prison and come unto thee. Now listen what he said about that. He said, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Jesus said that when you turn a child of God down, you have turned Jesus down. When you do something bad about a, to a Christian, you are doing it against the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason the Bible says, Touch not my knowing and do my prophets no harm. We are not an ambassador for Christ. And we must go Listen to what he said in Ephesians 3 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And he said that you have been rooted and grounded in love, as Brother Don taught this morning. We have a love, we have a compassion, we have a desire for these people to have what you and I have, and we have a responsibility to go out there and tell them and invite them that they might know Jesus as their Savior. A child of God come talk to you, it's because they want you to have what they have. You know what you're missing. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4 and 3, if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that's lost. He said we're hiding the gospel from them. And he said, went on to say in 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, said the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolish. Uh, he said, but unto us which are saved, it's the power of God. You know, it may sound foolish to those people out there, to them, but it is a responsibility. And you know, when you go out into the world, you have all sorts of things said to you sometime. I'm here to tell you, let that go in one year and run out the other. And, uh, and knowing that you have done your job, uh, you have presented Jesus Christ, uh, and He's going to bless you and I for that. Uh, under all circumstances, He will bless you. This is what He said in Romans 10, 13 and 14. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, says he shall be saved. Okay, he went on and said, How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard about? And how shall they hear without a preacher? 
And that don't mean just a, a preacher like a, a, I am here today. It is a child of God presenting the gospel. We're all ministers of Christ. We're an ambassador. And how are they going to know anything about the Lord if somebody in the world don't tell? I'll tell you what, this your generation is coming up behind us. Uh, uh, it just is just shaking. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's unreal what's going to happen in this world. Uh, as there's so many young people. Uh, that's out there in the world has never have darkened the house of God. Uh, and it's the reason that the parents will not bring them uh, anymore if you got kids in the house of God. Uh, most of the time it's grandparents that has brought them. Uh, and they're going to be a generation of people that have not heard the gospel. That's right. Amen. It's going to be bad. Yeah. This is what it said in 1 Timothy 4 and 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God and who is the Savior of all uh, man, especially those that believe. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, I'll take the suffering with God's people any day over the, the pleasures of sin in the world. We must tell people about Jesus whether they like it or not. We need to, as we see also, we talk to them because we don't want them to go to the place called hell. They're blinded. They can't see. They need their eyes open. Why the psalm says, Psalm 9, 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell in all the nations that forget God. I tell you, this country is going downhill. This country is getting off in the left field further every day that we live. Yeah. It's getting terrible. In the book of Acts, there was a great persecution against the church that was in Jerusalem. And God's people got scattered because they were persecuted. They had to get on the move. And the Bible said, Acts 8, 4 and 8. Therefore they were scattered and more went everywhere preaching the Word. Even though they was on a persecution, they was on, on the go. While well, they was on the go, they were still preaching. And they said, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people of one accord gave heed unto the thing which Philip spoke hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, and the unclean spirits crying and the voice uh, come out of many and were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame was healed. And there was a great joy in that city. They began to the Lord see under all persecution that, that can come against you and I, God will still bless if you stand true. He blessed these. And they was on the run because of persecution. And here they was healing people. People was getting healed. Paul stood at Mars Hill. And listen to what he done when he preached to the people. Acts 17, 22 and 24. Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are in the two superstitions. For as I passed by and behold your devotion and found an altar with this inscription, he said to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorant worship him, declare unto you. He let them know that he was on the wrong track. He said, God made the, the world and all things therein, seeing that He is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwell not in temples uh, made with hands. God dwells in our temple, our heart. Yes. That's where the Spirit of God dwells at. When we leave here, we take the Lord with us. Amen. He goes home with us. I've heard a lot of people, you know, I've seen people that's against some of the things that's in the house of God, like music, stuff like that, string instruments. 
But you go to their homes, and a lot of them got big ghetto blasters and stuff like that. I'll tell you what, if I'm against it in the house of God, I'm against it in my home. That's right. Don't bring the devil on the inside. You need to be for the little for Christ at home just as well as you do in the house of God. They'll tell us today in time to mind our own business. It's sort of like in Acts 24 and 25 sometimes. Paul here, he said, as he reasoned of righteousness and temperance and to come, Felix trembled. Here he's talking to this old Felix here, and Paul's getting next to him, and he began to tremble and shake. And Felix trembled and answered, said, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I'll call for you. Won't get shit out of him. Right at the door of salvation. Paul had to leave him just as lost as he was when Paul got there. When I have a convenient season, I'll do so and so. I'll tell you what, you'll get right with God when He's dealing with you. That's right. That's right. You don't do things on your term, you'll do it on God's terms. Right. You remember a story about Naaman in the Bible? When the Lord told him, go down, I mean, the man of God told him, go down and dip yourself seven times in the river of Jordan. And they said the leprosy would be healed. But he didn't want to go down that old muddy water. He wanted to go to a place that had clean water. And all they ever told him to do, just go down and seven times, you'd be clean. But he didn't want to do it that way. He wanted to do it his way. But what I'm told him, if he had bid thee to do some big great thing, you would have probably done it. Yeah. How much more than just go down and dip and be healed? And finally, listen, he went down into the water. <laughs> and the seventh time when he come up, his flesh was like a little baby. Perfect clean. I want to tell you, you won't get nothing done until you do it God's ways. And the Bible says for you and I to come by repentance and confessing our sins and asking them to forgive us and to dwell in our hearts by faith. Acts 26, 27, 28, Paul again, as he is talking to old, uh, King Agrippa. He said, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? He said, I know that thou believest. Paul told him, he said, I know you believe what they're saying. Then I remember said unto Paul, almost are persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul, you almost have persuaded me. Again, right at the door of salvation and turn it down. That's yeah. sort of like Judas in the Bible. He kissed the door of heaven and died without Jesus. That's how close he was. And the reason I say he kissed the door of heaven, Jesus is the way and he gave him the betrayal kiss. And he kissed the door that would tuck him to heaven. I want to tell you, we need to be like Paul said, today is the day of salvation. I don't know your heart here today, but I do know that if you're a Christian, you've got responsibilities to carry out. And that is represent Jesus Christ wherever we go. But if you're lost, don't put it off. Because anything can happen in a split second. We don't know what's going to, what tomorrow's going to bring. We do not know. 
But one thing I know, I know for sure, that if anything happens to me, I know where I'm going. Amen. I know where I'm going. And I'm going to be better off. And I like to stay here as long as I can preach the gospel. I would like to do that. As long as I got a right mind and can preach, I'd love to preach. But when it comes time for me to go, I'm ready to go. And I've been closed several times. But God, for some reason, by the prayers of the church, pulled me through. But I tell you, sometimes when he calls, you're gone. Amen. 